What's up guys, this is Skytech Freak and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and performance review of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4070 GPU. This is the Zotac Gaming RTX 4070 Twin Edge OC model and we're also going to be doing a comparison with Zotac's 3070 Twin Edge model which is basically Zotac's same model for the previous 30 series lineup and a comparison with that will give us some sort of idea on what the generational change in performance has been, if it's been a generational leap in performance or just a small step up. And secondly, we're also going to be comparing it to uh, the RTX 3080, the NVIDIA RTX 3080. And the reason for that is because the RTX 3080 is currently the 4070's closest market competitor in terms of performance right now. And so yeah, let's continue with the unboxing. Uh, I want to start the comparison with the 3070 twin edge right here because as you can see I don't think Zotac has even changed the manufacturing process for its box because uh, these cards that you will see in just a short while are very similar in terms of dimensions uh, but even the box that they come in is basically identical of course this 4070 box here has a different uh, color it's like grey as opposed to the black of the 3070 but you can see that even sort of the inner packaging everything the dimensions of the card haven't changed so Zotac has probably figured that it doesn't need to uh, spend a lot of money to change the packaging the 4070 on the left I'm just gonna take out and you can see again the packaging uh, also very very similar and you can see that the 4070 is a very very small card the twin edge 4070 by Zotac is a very very small card uh, in comparison to the 3070 which was also one of the shortest cards I think the shortest card uh, in the 30 series lineup by Nvidia that was produced by any major manufacturer it is much taller if you keep it in a vertical position I guess you would call this height otherwise this would be the width of the card uh, in the 3070 was much taller than the 4070 is as you can see here uh, it overshoots in terms of height quite a fair bit, much more than the 4070. So in general, the 4070 is a smaller card. It's shorter in terms of length. The width isn't that much, and they are both sort of two-ish uh, slot cards in terms of PCIe. One thing that's really interesting is that even though the 40 series does have a proprietary sort of 12-pin power connector, the 40 series, the 4070 cards or GPUs can opt to have instead just a single 8-pin, which is a standard connector across PSUs. Uh, and that's what Zotac has done with the 4070 at least. And you can see that over here, there are two 8-pin connectors. So this is of course, uh, even the 30 series did have a proprietary connector, but no third-party manufacturers actually went ahead and put that in their cards. Only the FE models had uh, the new proprietary connector. This one of course uses 8-pins. One thing that's interesting is that, and this is uh, true as per specification as well, is that the 3070 draws more power. So the max power draw for the 40, uh, for the 3070 is rated at 220 watts, as opposed to just 200 watts on uh, the RTX 4070. So now you can see that the comparison between the two cards, uh, how similar they are, and we'll further look at performance as well as look at performance against my MSI Ventus 3X 3080, which is of course a much larger card. The Zotac model of the 4070, this twin edge, is the smallest 4070 that's available. Quick look around the card will also be indicative of that. Uh, one thing that's also different is that this time the Zotac gaming logo is actually RGB. So if you install Zotac's proprietary software, uh, you can change the color of this RGB LED. This one did have an LED, but it was white. It was not configurable. So there was nothing you could do in Zotac software to change that. And along with the little bit of color you can add over here to the RGB, there's also a colorful logo, which was missing from last year's Twin Edge model, which was again, much taller. So it was just black and white. We can see a few new design elements that Zotac has gone ahead with in its 40 series of cards is that they've made them a little more sort of uh, rounder towards the edges as opposed to other manufacturers and their previous lines which were extremely angular and either boxy or angular with sharp angles now all their cards kind of look like futuristic skateboards or spaceships or something like that and they have this interesting like line pattern uh between the fans and it's not overwhelming but even their triple fan models do have uh this sort of uh line design and one other thing that was really interesting is that they actually have the zotac logo back here on 
uh, the IO port shield as well. So that's that's just something cool uh, and nice to see. Now, while I do this spiel, let's talk about why someone would want to buy the Twin Edge model, right? Like clearly I've had last year's generation of Twin Edge model as well, along with this year's 4070. And the reason for that is that this is the smallest 4070 that's available across the market. There are other dual fan options like the Asus Dual, which is one of the most popular cards right now, apart from the FE, of course. And uh, Eno 3D also makes a dual fan model, and I'm sure many other manufacturers make. But in terms of dimensions, and if you have to fit this in SFF builds or in other sort of chassis, uh, the 4070 Twin Edge OC is the smallest 4070 that's available. I saw a video the other day which sort of inspired me to make this one as well, uh, where someone had an eGPU box which they connect to their laptop via Thunderbolt, and the only 4070 card that would fit is this one. We already know that the 4070, the 4060 Ti, sorry, and the 4060s are much smaller, and so all of those uh, can be much smaller cards. In fact, you can even have single fan cards for those, but it's, when it comes to the 4070, this is the smallest one. So if you're trying to fit it in tight spaces, if you have a case that doesn't accommodate large GPUs, but you want the fastest possible GPU, uh, then you might want to look at the RTX 4070 Twin Edge because this is smaller than the FE and it's smaller than the Asus Dual or any other card uh, that's out there. Another reason why you might want to pick this up, if you picked up an, a Zotac Magnus 1, is that this is the only 4070 that will fit in that. Again, 3060 Ti's, 4060 Ti's do fit in the Magnus 1. In fact, when it comes to 3070s also, there were only two 3070s across the market that could fit in the Magnus 1. One was of course the 3070 Twin Edge, which comes with the Magnus 1 if you get the i7-10700 uh, model. And the other dual fan 3070 that could have fit from the 30 series was MSI's Ventus 2X, which is a dual fan version that also fits in the Zotac Magnus 1. But when it comes to 4070s, I looked across many, many models and the only 4070 that will fit in the Magnus 1 is the Zotac Twin Edge. And in fact, they are coming out of the 13th generation Magnus 1 with the same case, but a 13th gen processor instead of a 10th gen processor. And of course, the 4070 and 4060 Ti models. So before we jump into the numbers of the benchmark, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick overview of the system that we'll be benchmarking this on. So as you can see, it's this NZXT H5 Elite case. Um, and the system specifications themselves are basically a 5900X with 32 GB of 3200 megahertz RAM and an NZXT B550 motherboard. And I know that the 5900X is not even the best AM4 CPU right now and AM5 is already out. Uh, I know for gaming benchmarks, probably the 5800X 3D would have been a better option, but I do a lot of productivity and video editing and things like that for which the 5900X is better than the 5800X 3D. So that's the reason that's in my system. And as for the RAM, I know 3200 megahertz isn't as fast as 3600 megahertz. I think this system is pretty indicative of what the sort of system you want to buy a 4070 in uh, looks like. It's not going to be your 3900K or your 7900X 3D or your 7800X 3D. You're most likely going to be adding a 4070 card either to a last generation platform or if you're on the latest generation, it's probably going to look like a 13700, 13600 or something like a 7600 um, on the AMD side. So I think as far as that goes, this system will be able to perform well with the 4070 and it and it's indicative of what someone who's looking to buy a 4070 might have in their system. So yeah, um, as you can see, the 3070 is already being benchmarked. I already had that in the system. So let me also just prepare the 4070. And now we'll throw that in as soon as the 3070 is done being benched and I'll catch you guys when the numbers are ready. So I just got done benchmarking all three of the graphics cards and I'll put those benchmark results up for you guys to compare in a minute. But before that, I just thought it would be a good idea for me to put up pictures with each of the graphics cards installed in the test build so that you guys know which benchmark corresponds to which graphics card. So starting from the left, we have the Zotac 3070 Twin Edge OC. Uh, then in the middle we have the MSI 3080 Ventus 3X and on the right we have the Zotac Twin Edge 4070, the new card that we were benchmarking today. And if you're wondering why the Ventus or the 3080 machine looks different than 
uh, the machines in which we benchmark the two twin edge models that's because i was having trouble compatibility issues with putting the larger graphics card in my main build so instead i put it in another nzxt h5 case so that there wouldn't be too much of an issue but the only difference here is that the cpu is actually a 5800x 3d versus the 5900x in the other two test builds and of course that the cpu is air cooled in uh, the 3080 build as opposed to cooled by an AIO in the other build. Uh, but that being said, if there's any discrepancy in terms of CPU score, that's what that could be attributed to. Apart from that, in terms of RAM and motherboard, the systems are identical. And more importantly, in terms of software and background processes as well, because I use the same Windows drive for both the test builds. Uh, so whatever background processes were on things like, you know, Corsair, IQ, sign, Razer Synapse, OBS, whatever was going on in the background, uh, hardware info, that will affect all the builds sort of equally and therefore affect performance of these GPUs proportionally. So that being said, let's start looking at the benchmarks. And the first benchmark that we have here is 3D Mark. And 3D Mark was interesting because I expected the 4070 to still lose out to the 3080 by a few percent, but in fact, the 4070 in 3D Mark beats the 3080 by about four or five percent, and it beats the 3070 by a whole 20 percent. So, so that was interesting. Feel free to pause at any point because I'm going to go through these benchmarks a little quickly and just talk uh, talk about the main notes. But if you guys want to get more in depth information as to how these cards perform in the benchmark, it's all there if you pause it at the right time, right? The second benchmark we have is Heaven benchmark, and this is where. Uh, what I was expecting to happen actually does happen and the 3080 does end up beating the 4070 and in fact this is also the benchmark which was the most interesting because it's a benchmark where the 3080 has the biggest lead over the 4070 but it's also the same benchmark in which the 4070 has the smallest lead over the 3070 so I'm thinking that maybe heaven isn't uh, quite optimized for the 4070 yet or whatever the reason is basically we have a 10% difference across the board so the 3080 is 10% better than the 4070 and the 4070 is 10% faster than the 3070 in the heaven benchmark moving on let's look at Fermark and Fermark is interesting again because what we get in results is that the 3080 is again four to five percent faster than the 4070 and the 4070 is a whole 32 percent faster than the 3070. So this is where we have the biggest gain in terms of difference between the two cards from the same gen uh, from the same lineup between generations. Uh, and lastly, of course, these are gaming cards, the GPUs, and we must look at everyone's favorite, at least benchmarking game for now, which is Cyberpunk 2020, uh, sorry, Cyberpunk 2077. And here we can see that when it comes to the preset, which was ray tracing ultra and texture quality high, in the resolution of 1440p so i only benchmarked in 2k or 1440p because i expect anyone that's looking at the 4070 to be looking at that resolution it's not really a 4k gaming card i mean you could get away with it um, but not at high uh, frame rates and not in modern games so i'm assuming everyone that's looking at these cards is looking at them from a 1440p 2k perspective and i've benchmarked accordingly uh, as you can see that in the ray tracing ultra and high preset mode at 2k we have 58 average fps from the 3070 79 fps uh, from the 3080 and 78 fps from the 4070 so here is where we have the smallest difference between the 3080 and 4070 which is interesting given that it's actually a game and application that you will be using gpus for so that's good to see it's almost negligible difference what we do see is that the 3080 is able to manage about a 60 fps even at its minimum frame rate whereas the 4070 isn't able to keep a minimum of 60 fps but of course the max and average frame rates are extremely extremely adequate um so here no point comparing the 3080 and 4070 in terms of percentage but we can say that the 4070 is a full 26 percent faster than the 3070 in cyberpunk at these presets so given this sort of performance what is the conclusion we can come to uh, about the RTX 4070 well I think we can just generalize that it is about four to five percent slower than the 3080 so it has about four to five percent less performance than the 3080 but it also consumes 
forty percent less power than the thirty eighty. It actually consumes ten percent less power even than the thirty seventy from last generation. But a whole forty percent less power draw than the thirty eighty is huge, right? So then. The question as to whether or not you should buy this card comes down to like what your priorities are. If you're able to get a 3080 second hand, that's practically half the price of a new 4070 right now with four to five percent higher performance or basically the same performance as the 4070. So if you have the option of picking up a second hand 3080, it is a good option as long as you're comfortable and you know the buyer and you know that the card um, it doesn't have any issues, right? That being said, if power efficiency is something that is a priority to you, uh, let's say like electricity prices are really, really high wherever you are and you game for hours at a time, it might make sense for you to pick up the 4070 it also doesn't get quite as hot or noisy as a 3080. So if you're sensitive to noise, uh, or like I said, of course, have an SFF PC that just can't fit bigger cards, then the 4070 might be something that you will prioritize over a 3080 or last generation's 3070. Hope you guys liked the video. Please like and subscribe if I was able to help you make a decision about the new RTX 4070. And please stay tuned if you guys are interested in watching me install this RTX 4070 Twin Edge in the Zotac Magnus 1. But that's all for now. See you guys in the next one. Thanks.